What's up guys, so I know you've already seen the title and today we're going to be doing some slingshot hunting for some bullfrogs at the pond. But before we do that, I have some groundhogs to deal with first. So in my last video, I came to these the barns right here and with my pellet gun and I was trying to take out some groundhogs. And it worked, I got one or two of them down. But there's still some here and I need to finish the job today. So I got five of these traps, these kind of bears. I don't know if I'm going to set all of them here because I don't know how many holes are here. But we got a hole right here. This is the one he got away from us when I, when I might have hit his nose. So we're going to try to catch him out of this silo. So the trap I'm using for this one is a Duke 155. And this is as small as you want to go for cotton bear traps for groundhogs, groundhog sized animals. But they still, they're still very humane and taking a groundhog out. And that's like the perfect size trap for this little hole. It's a little small for a 160, which is what I normally use for groundhogs. So I'm going to show you guys how to set this trap. Let's go ahead and get this thing set. Okay, so some of you probably have already seen how I set these, but I'm just going to show you again. I'm only going to show setting this one trap, just so you know. You get an idea of what I'm doing for the rest of these traps. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze the springs down and put these safeties right here so it holds a spring like that. we go. I got the springs compressed. Now you just take the jaws, open them up like this, and you put the dog right on the trigger right like that. And what the groundhog's going to do, is this is going to be right in front of his hole. He's going to go through with his head like this, and it's going to close right down on his head, and it's going to kill him almost, almost instantly, because it's going to break his neck. There we go, that's pretty good in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the safeties off now. You can see that trap is pretty solid right there. I'm going to go ahead and stake it off out here. And even for these kind of bears, even though it kills them pretty, very quickly, you still want to make sure your stake's in the ground good, because they'll be uh, kicking around a lot, just like a mouse does when it gets caught in a mouse trap. But we got a big space right here, which a groundhog could still, at least a little one, could fit through that, and we do not need that. So... I got this grass that was right here. I'm just gonna stuff it in there. I think that'll work fine. That looks like a nice tunnel for a groundhog. That should be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go and try to find four more good holes to set some groundhog traps at. And I will see you guys at the frog pond right now. Okay guys, so I'm at the pond right now with my slingshot. It's been a while since I've actually done any frog hunting. Last year I haven't even I didn't even go frog hunting one time. This is that's because this is the only good pond we have frogs in that are big enough to hunt. There just there wasn't a lot last year, so I just decided to let the population grow. So hopefully when we hunt this year it's gonna be a lot better than it was last year. So let's go over there. I can actually see some frogs already. Let's go see if we can get a shot on one. Yeah, I can see some sitting on the bank. But they're really small. See, there's some right there. They're just too small to shoot. I'm gonna walk around here, see if I can find any big ones though. Got a pretty good sized frog right there. He's definitely big enough to eat, I think. So, it's about a 10 yard shot. We'll see if we can take him out with the slingshot. I think I just dropped him right there. No way, did I just get that thing. I think I just headshot that thing perfectly. Let's go get him. I think I got him. There's some more right here. That's a little small, we'll leave him. Oh yeah, we did get him. We did get him. Oh my gosh. Oh, what the heck? How did he just get away? I hit that thing square in the head kidding me? Frogs are like so tough. What the heck? Okay, that thing swam like all the way out there and it's too deep to even go out there. He might, there's a good chance he'll come back up and we might be able to put another shot on him. So I'm just going to loop around the pond and 
come back here. Hopefully it'll come back up. I just came back to the tripod and he came back up already. Where's he at? There he is. Yeah, he's 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 struggling for sure. I gotta get a good shot on him. He's about ready to die. If I can hit him right here, it should be good. That was a bad shot. I might have just got him right there. Oh wait, is he still there? Yeah. That was a little low. I think I missed him, but I should be able to hit him right here. I'm not sure if I just hit him or not. Okay, let's just go get him. There he is, I see him. He's right here. Got him, yes, first frog with the slingshot. Oh yeah, let's check out these shots. All right, I put one right through his head and it went straight through him, but we got him down. I'm gonna put him out real quick. I think that was actually my first frog ever with the slingshot, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna keep walking around the pond. I'm trying to go on a I'm gonna try to get one or two more. Okay, so it turns out the frog I got with my slingshot was like the biggest frog in that pond I saw. So I only got that one. I'm gonna go and start cleaning them up and we'll cook them. And I'm sorry if this audio is like, kinda sounds like trash right now. That's because there's literally like millions of cicadas behind me. It's the year of cicadas, so they are extremely loud right now. All right, let's go ahead and get a fire going for this frog. I don't know what I was thinking, I completely forgot my kindling. Okay, let's try this again. Gotta kinda put it under there, try to block the wind as much as possible. Get my kindling that I remembered to get this time. Gently set it on there. It's really dry so it should light right up. There we go. That's better. All right, while we're waiting for the fire over there to die down and get some good coals, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I'm going to clean this frog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut right here, right on the, just like where the legs connect, I guess. I'm just going to cut that off. Throw that in the woods for the raccoons to eat. And now I'm just going to grab some of the skin. Okay, so I got some of the skin pulled down. Let's put your thumb in like that. And just, that did not work how it was supposed to. So I'm just gonna have to pull it off one at a time like that. And you can see all of that good meat right there on that leg. And I'll get this side, pull it down. And there is some good frog legs to eat right there. I'm just gonna put some blackened seasoning on these. I'm just gonna take them off, cut them apart real quick. There we go. I'm just gonna wrap them in tin foil and then throw them on the fire. There we go, that should be good. Sitting right down in there. It's been about 10 minutes, so we should be, should be done cooking by now. Okay, I think I might have messed this up pretty bad. I think I burnt it. Oh, maybe not. Oh, it was close though. Looks a little bit burnt. Should be pretty edible though. Alright, I got that small piece right here. It looks pretty tasty. Try this little piece of meat. it comes right off the bone. That's when you know it's definitely done when it comes right off the bone like that. But it tastes very burnt. Tastes a little like fish. The texture is a lot chewier though. But really the most of the flavor I taste is just like, it just tastes burnt. See that white meat? Looks pretty good.
That piece wasn't as bad. It was still it still tastes really burnt, but not as bad as the first one. Here's the other leg right here. There, that side's not as burnt. I can't really taste any of the seasoning on it. I might not I might not have put enough. I don't know. This big chunk of meat right here. Come off the bum. That last piece was definitely the best one. It didn't taste very burnt at all. Okay, so that's it for the frog hunt in the kitchen cook. So, so I'll see you guys tomorrow when we check those groundhog traps. I'm definitely thinking we're going to have at least one, so make sure to stay tuned for the tomorrow check. Okay, so it's actually been like three days since I set those groundhog traps, and we finally got one. So I had a trap at this hole right here, which is right by that concrete where I shot the one in that in my last video and we did get one here but it was still alive when I got here which never happens like you can see the bar went right across the top of his head he was still alive so I had to put a shot through his head when I got here so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing out of this trap get it reset in that hole because I'm pretty sure there's more groundhogs still living down there so we'll get him out and we actually do have another one over in that barn right there so we'll go check him out too Okay, so before I go and show you that other groundhog I got, I'm just going to let you guys know. So that is the trap I showed you how to set. And right over here on the other side of the silo, um, right after I set that trap over there, I set one right there in this hole, which is a 160. And while I was coming... What the heck? Baby cats, okay. Scared me to death. These things better not go in my traps. And while I was setting this con bear over here, which is also 160, I heard a snap go off right there. And I caught a stinking groundhog, and I look over, and he's caught right on top of the head, just like the last one. And, like, out of all the years I've been trapping, this has never happened to me before. Like, catching a groundhog or that size of animal on top of the head and it not dying. So I don't know what's going on with these traps. I don't know if their springs are just got too weak, or the triggers got too sensitive and it's going off early. So this is the first time that's ever happened to me, which is really weird. That's obviously not how I want to catch him. Uh, I don't know what to do about these cats. I, I kind of need to get them out of here. Okay. Come here, kitties. This way. Okay, I'm just going to leave these cats alone. They're, I picked them up, and they're way too light to even set the triggers off, so they'll be, they'll be all right. All right, so now we are in that other barn. I have like five traps in here, I think. Yeah, there he is. Okay, so this is a 160 again. And we got a super tiny groundhog. Look at the size of that groundhog. That thing is small. It's a little little baby guy. But see, that's how you're supposed to catch him, right behind the head. And that's how they die, real quick. See that? So we'll get this guy out of here and keep on checking some more, see if we got any others. So because it took so long to actually catch something, after the first day of catching nothing, I just decided to set a bunch of groundhog traps so we could at least catch some in this video. So I'm in this barn, we got nothing in that trap. I have one more over there on the other side of this wall, we can check real quick. Right here. There's nothing in that one either. Okay, I wasn't too sure about any in this barn. We are about to go to the the barn where, which I'm pretty sure I've trapped groundhogs out of here in every one of my groundhog trapping videos. And there's a lot of holes in here, so pretty sure we're going to have something, and hopefully. Okay, first couple is not looking too good. There's one right there, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. What the heck, man? Nothing there. Nothing. Well. Well guys, I guess that's going to wrap up this video. I was actually really expecting to catch a groundhog in here within the first day, but I guess we'll have to wait a little longer to catch something. So I'll go and show you our two catches today real quick. Alright, so here's our two catches we got today. Got this super small little guy, which is probably like half the size of this average groundhog right here. So, I'm not going to be eating these guys, I'm just going to chuck them out in the woods for something else to eat like a coyote. Buzzards will love eating these guys, so they will not be going to waste at all. Yeah. 
So that's going to be it for this one guys. Let me know if you like the slingshot and groundhog hunting videos because we're definitely going to be getting some more out soon. Especially groundhog ones because you see those blank spots of soybeans right there? Those are actually from groundhogs that come out, come out of the woods right there and eat all of that. That is why we need to get these things out of our farm because they cause a big problem. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.